My dear fellow listeners and viewers, good evening once again and welcome to another edition of Let's Chat Chat with Narayanat. Let's Chat Chat with Narayanat is a Canadian initiative with a unique impact. There are a few different ways to listen to us. You can listen to us on the regular dial, that's the radio, 102.7 CKMS FM. You can listen to us on Rogers Digital Cable, for those of you who have the Rogers Digital Box, and of course, we're also a live streamer chit chat here, so do take the opportunity to share our page. We ask you to stay with us if you would like to learn a thing or two. However, if you're looking for an opportunity to vent out any sort of negativity, this is not for you. Tonight, we have a, a Varman Bidesi joining us. We will be talking about some interesting and new initiative that has the potential to benefit many, many people. So do take the opportunity to share a page. How are you doing tonight, uh, Varman? Oh, thanks for having me on this program. Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. Thank you. I'm looking forward to, to le- tell the audience what's happening on our side. Okay. All right. All right. Of course. Of course. And so before we get into um, some of the interesting um, initiative you're working on, take a couple of minutes, uh, to, uh, take your time, introduce yourself to us. Let us know a little bit about you. I mean, the, the, the last name is it's, it's, it's a no name, you know, <laughs> so people know that I can tell you that much for sure. So introduce yourself to us and um, then we are going to get right into the, um, the initiative that you're working on. Yes, I'm Vernon Bedesi. Um, I have five brothers uh, in uh, two in Canada, three United States from my father who passed away four years ago, who started this business back in Guyana. And this year is our 45 years in the United States and Canada. So we are a household name bringing foods from foreign land to your table. Um, we have over 7,000 food product, related food product, and another 10,000 sporting goods. So we, we distribute from um, around the world that people are looking for products way back in the 70s. They could not find it. My dad decided to go out and source these products for Canadians as well as uh, you know, our guides or current fellows. So that's how we started the business. I'm the president of the U.S. operation. I have one brother here with me. I have two brothers in Canada, Raymond and Envor, and um, they're doing the Canadian part of the work. So um, that's what I have to say about me. But I also have many projects that I'm working on. Uh, I'm the chairman of Guyana Hemp Industry, which is something different. We're not going to talk about that. But uh, if hemp decides to come around in Guyana, uh, just like I have sugar, cane, and the rice industry, I represent... uh, the farmers in, in, in that industry shortly coming. All right. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction there. And I'm glad to share some of the pieces. I wasn't aware of all of the pieces there. I didn't realize that you have quite a few brothers, you know. So uh, that clarifies a few things there. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> all right. So let's get right in, into it. I mean, um, doing what you're doing, it's, it's already um, a handful, so to speak. Um, but you are also, um, as we mentioned earlier, you're working in a few um, unique projects that can benefit a lot of people, especially the guy and his people. Can you tell us about that, um, about the project that you're working on right now? Sure. But before I get to the project, let me add something. Uh, yeah, sure. A lot of people know us, but mm. they don't know the size of our, our business. You know, we do have one of the largest Caribbean food distributors in the United States and Canada. So because it's so large, these projects I'm taking it's easy for me to handle. It's difficult for other people to handle because they haven't had a large scale size business. So this project, what I'm doing in Guyana, are two uh, orphanage, two women's shelter, and two animal rescue sanctuary in Guyana. And we'll have uh, one of each in Burbies and the other off the Suicide Linden Highway in that region of Guyana. We'll be starting, uh, we, we have the land, but we're waiting for paperwork from the land and survey to actually start building, you know, guy and I just can't build and the neighbor comes and say, hey, that's my property. So we want to have um, legal documents because when you have a, a nonprofit, every penny counts. So we do not want to waste money ahead of time. Okay, excellent. Um, so you are on, it. things are in the works, if I'm understanding you correctly, then am I right? Yes, things are in the work. We're doing uh, other structural stuff like creating the website, Facebook pages. We have all that in place already. Um, we are looking to bring in equipment for the animal, for example. Uh, you know, in Guyana, it's really hot because it's near the equator and these horses or donkeys or, or any, any form of these carts that are being pulled, they're in the sun or the rain. So we are going to create or design a canopy that can be attached to the cart handle so it prevents uh, rain or sun over these animals. That's one part. But we're also looking at bringing in um, 
a galvanized trailer, low costing trailer uh, that's heavy duty that can carry the same weight as this cart and replace it with um, to these owners who have horse or carts and they have to give up that in order to get one of that. But those are things that we're doing behind the scene that are already in design stage working. Uh, one of these uh, carts costs maybe $1,500 US, maybe even more, depends on the specs. So we're funding money differently what other uh, people are doing in Guyana. You know, I like to credit those people in Guyana, whoever they're doing it, whatever they're doing it at. So every little bit helps, not just my operation, every little bit helps. So first of all, I should ask you, by the way, what, you know, what prompted you or your team, so to speak, to start this particular project? And why Guyana, first of all, because you live over here in North America. Well, my family is, you know, are from 59 Village Burbies, and we, we grew up there, and, and uh, we always been doing business in Guyana since we left. We bring many products from Guyana that from third parties, like you know, fresh product or bottled product. Um, so that's one of the reasons. Uh, my father peacefully passed away uh, four years ago, and uh, I went back to see what he was doing to increase or you know make a mark for him. And when I got there, I was traveling from uh, like the airport to Burbies, and every so often I'll see a dog or an animal get hit with a car or just left at the side of the road. And, and I, I'm a businessman; I, I do math. And from Georgetown to Burbies, I must have saw a dozen animals. So I said, "Listen, if I saw ten today, and I'm going back the next day to Georgetown, and I see another ten, and if you multiply ten per day times that by 365." That's a lot of animals. I'm thinking, where do these dogs come from? Or these uh, other, it could be sheep, it could be, uh, you know, a pig or, or crossing the road. Not only that, it could be larger animals like cow I see, horses I see. So I said, this is this is ridiculous. This is, they need an animal control here. And that happened for like two years and I'm seeing it and I'm seeing what I could do. In the meantime, I'm figuring out solutions, what to do as I'm getting to know more about Guyana. But I also knew that was happening a long time ago, I hear it, but I, now I'm seeing it firsthand, the volume. And that touched my heart because I, I'm an animal lover myself. I have a dog here in my uh, my home in New York and uh, we had many past when we were living in Canada. So these things, uh, you know, I'm prompt to, but then you'll watch Facebook or the news and you see children in accident, for example, uh, the parents died or in fire, they're homeless. And really, Ghana is not structural to take care of, of an orphan. They are right now, but it's not the way you would want to have them take care, like if you were in the United States and Canada. So that was another thing I was looking at, as well as the batter women, for example. Lots of death, you know, by not just batter, but, you know, some are suicidal, you know, uh, fall in love at young age and can't do it without each other. So all these things touches me. So, you know, and a businessman, I know how to structure things or how to get things going. And I strategically figure out how I can make this successful versus others. Others are great out there, but I'm looking for a large scale operation. And this is how I can make it successful because more into the, to the mix is getting employment for people, revenues for people, as well taking care of the people or animals. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. Let me acknowledge a few people very quickly, if that's okay with you. Sure. Uh, um, let me um, say hello to, and um, by the way, for those of you who are watching listen to us, keep in mind there are a few different ways to listen to us. You can listen to us on the regular dial. That's the radio, 102.7 CKMS FM. You can also listen to us on Rogers Digital Cable for those of you who have the Rogers Digital Box. And it's all Canadian initiative, by the way. But obviously, we're running the live stream, so take the opportunity to share a page. Um, let me give a, a special hello to Gobin. You probably know Gobin. He's also an um, animal lover. And so I'm, I'm assuming that's one of the reasons he tuned in after <laughs> to the show here tonight. It's never a bad thing. Eh? And let me give a special hello to Annie, um, a former classmate of mine, um, um, you know, Shamir. And for those of you, you know, who um, we, we are not able to see you, you know, the radio people and so on, but do know that we appreciate um, all of you um, here. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you, though, um, what kind of feedback have you got so far from people, particularly the Guyanese people, when they heard of this project? What is it that you're hearing from people? Positive, mixed messages? What is it that you're hearing? So far, I'm seeing from my Facebook friends and people who I know, everything is positive. positive. They like to support this organization because it's different. And most of my friends and business associates know the type of operation we will be doing. You know, we, we're not looking to small operation, we're looking for mega operation. For Guyana, for all these three areas, you need something big. Now, I'm not saying 100% big, 
uh, to, to resolve that. That will take you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, but we have to start somewhere. So if everyone's doing, for example, a percent, two percent, whatever or not, I wanna make a 10, 20, 25% change. And that's why I have to think big to do these things. Or I know how to find funding to, for some of this project. Not everything. I'm looking for the guy and the guy and these people to help contribute from donating volunteer work if they see this is good for them. Our family name is is in this business for 45 years, so I'm putting my family name and trust out there that we are going to do the right thing for the people in Guyana and the animals as well. All right, thank you. So how about completion date? Like, do you have a plan? I'm assuming as a businessman as well, do you have those knowledge? So do you have a plan as to when you would like to complete at least the first you know, phase of the project? Well, we were uh, going to start last October uh, 2020. And then the government officials got a hold of my project through the co-chairman of Guyana Hemp Industry, which we, I'm the chairman of. And they all loved the project from animals to children uh, and women. And the first lady looked at it and said, she's gonna help us as well as other agency from the, from the um, livestock. Everyone was amazed with the project because my presentation was in depth on what we're gonna do. So we do have a plan that we will post later on Facebook, maybe at the end of this month, how we're gonna do certain things. The so certain things are confidential at the moment, uh, how we're gonna do it from A to Z but it will be disclosed as we go step by step. So the, the project got delayed because, uh, you know, we didn't get the right to the land. They said, hold on, hold on. We'll, you know, that's how Guyana works basically. But we, we got through with the land now. We have 200 acres in each area basically granted to us. And we're just waiting for the title. If we get the title, we'll start tomorrow basically. And we will start with animal care first because once you have a title, it's very easy to build like say a makeshift shelter, barns for animals, if it's cows, horses, sheep, and while you're building a proper structure, you know, some of the things that we're looking to do right now is to get x-ray machines, which we will bring from um, China, Korea, um, Japan. And these things that are already sourced out for these animals, portable ones as well. So we'll have them at both location. And that's something short in Guyana having x-rays for uh, animal machine. And, and, and we, we're not looking to work with ourselves. We're looking to work with other agency in Guyana. If there's another uh, nonprofit organization for animal, we'll let them use our equipment for free because we're looking out for animals. Doesn't matter who have it, where they are. We're also looking for endangered species to look at, at as well. Not just the animals that are on the road. We're looking to remove them and put them in the sanctuary basically. So let's say you go to town and you see dogs or even cats or stray animals, we will collect that and bring them to our sanctuary, take care of them medically, feed them uh, as well. And people who actually abandon animals too, like for example, if they have uh, some pets, have litters or, or kittens drop, they take it two dams over and drop it. No, we don't want you to do that. We want you to call us, we'll pick them up and take it to our sanctuary. Even to that, if you have a pet that you're no longer able to care for, and you just want to lose them uh, on the beach or somewhere far away, no, we don't want you to do that. We want you to call us, and we'll pick it up, pick them up, sorry, and take them to our sanctuary. I'm not sure about now, but um, the, the the beach entrance used to be a popular spot for that, eh? because we used to live right by the beach entrance, and they and because of the shop, and we used to have like little extra pieces here and there. We used to have mm -hmm. lots of animals um, coming along, eh? Yeah. Um, so I think I, I think it's a good idea. So apart from you seeing some pieces and apart from people, um, you know, shared similar stories, uh, because I never get to that point. Like, have you like um, um, done research to see anything about stats and so on there? Or, or you think it's enough what you have seen enough, you know, based on conversation you have had or enough of knowledge that we already have? Like, is there any stats on that kind of thing? Anything related to what you've just said? Well, I saw the stats for myself because, like I said, when I travel, and if you look at uh, just from Georgetown to Burbies, you're getting at least, let's say I saw 10 for that day, maybe five for another day. But if you average it out, 10 from just Burbies to Georgetown or Joe Burbies back, remember, you have to Linden, you have to from Parika, you have as a cubo. So, so let's use the 10 number, multiply that by 365. You're talking 3,000 animals, you know. Uh, so, it's a lot of animals that's out there. So you don't really need stats. So I saw for myself and we really do need the sanctuary, but the sanctuary is not the only cure. We need to have spading and neutering of these animals as well. 
So we need a database and we'll have the, you know, one of the top programs that can run there to see who have an animal or, or if they are going to uh, have a litter, we will ask them to, to figure out if they want to give it to a neighbor or friend, family, but also have them uh, spayed and neutered to control the population of animals as well. I know things probably have changed over the years, but I know my time growing up in Guyana, um, not too many people value animals, at least that's those, true. right? At least those days. And I think that's one of the reasons we see them all over the place. So I'm assuming by the way, and I guess you can answer this. So the, the animals that you've seen, you know, um, on the road, you know, running around and so on, like I'm assuming they, there's no owner to them kind of thing. They are just wild animals, so to speak, right? Am I right? Some are wild, but some people in Guyana have their gates open and oh, they go, okay, okay. you know, normally uh, they let them roam. This is normal. It's not just uh, animals like dogs we're referring mm -hmm. to, basically, but there's sheep, there's goats, donkey, pigs, horses, cows, everything's out there. But this is where we will come into place, for example, is to have animal control. Um, lots of people go and collect animals and take them to the police station. And the, at the police station, these animals suffer in the heat, a little less food, water, or medical attention. So we're working with the government that any animal that they get in pound, we will pick them up with our vehicles and take them to our sanctuary, check them out, feed them water until the owner claims them through either the court or police to resolve that matter. It's a big project, just this animal thing based on everything that you said there. I really hope it works so well for you, man, because well, there's a need. I can tell you that based on what I know uh, as well, because I've seen it uh, myself firsthand and, ba and based on what you were saying and based on what people are saying like right now too, it looks like this the need still exists, if not even more now than ever too, right? So yeah, the is need is there thing. and it is a mega project. And that's why I'm looking for the people of Guyana and around the world to help me contribute either volunteer or by donation, like, share, or recommend, you know, just share it out there. Because a neighbor could have an animal that they want to toss out before they toss out, call us. And the need is definitely there, I, I, that's for sure. But also this project is, is, is large for other people of let's say average Guyanese, but we are, I'm an average Guyanese too, but I've handled mega business in my past and even present. So this is something like back of my hand I can have because I can employ people. I'm not looking to do it myself. You have to have volunteers, you have to have staffing, et cetera. But I know how to get everything, for example, all these foods, all these medical supply, extra machine, the vehicles, all these things I'm working on right now. So if we're up and ready in let's say 60, 90 days, these things will be delivered on time and we can start. Right now you don't have a particular ambulance, for example, to, to, to rush a, a small, animal to, to the to the vet where we are. So we're gonna bring in a few of them uh, directly because we're a direct importer around the world. So rather than going through a middleman, we're, our money is gonna use wisely to bring these vehicles in. And even for example, horses or big cattle, we need a cattle sized vehicle or trailer to bring this in. And the Guyana doesn't have this, so we have this idea of what we're gonna do to make it happen, so to speak. Good information there. By the way, you have volunteers already. <laughs> People are willing to volunteer here. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, um, I think uh, what you might need to, which you probably already have in the plan, it will be important to educate people on all of this too, right? Because like I said to you, um, for some reason, animals don't get the kind of, you know, um, you know, respect and treatment that they deserve compared to places like North America, if you know what I mean. We don't have to get into all right. That. Right. So, so the world is changing. The laws are changing around the world. In the United States, lots of people have gotten to, uh, to courts and, and got jail for abusing animals. And the problem with Guyana is a small country, but they don't have finance uh, to get a lawyer and review the, the laws and change some laws. But, you know, with our connection, uh, being in business and, and doing this mega project, that's why if we were to do a small project, we will not succeed. But if we do a mega project, then we are going to have some rights to change this. Um, the structure over there and anyone who abuses the animal eventually will pay the consequences by behind bars after six months or six years. I have to get the uh, non lal here, man. <laughs> I'm sure he would find it. He would find it because remember, Guyana ranked in 2019 and the number one ecotourism in the world. And you're going to bring foreigners, and foreigners love animals. And you can't have this abuse out there. It's affecting the, the economy in one way or the other. Bad rating, for example.
for sure, for sure. No, I think it's a great initiative. And now that you're explaining all the pieces, and I think it makes sense that you that you came on here um, because um, you know reading bits and pieces, we are only getting piece you know of the information there. But now that you're explaining. Um, your, your passion for it as well too um, it's making sense and now um, the dots are being connected now because people are responding and they and it's all making sense so yes thank you. so my dear fellow listeners for those of you who have just tuned in keep in mind you're listening to less chit chat when around that there are a few different ways to listen to us you can listen to us on a regular dial that's the radio one and two point seven tkms fm you can listen to us on rogers digital cable for those of you who have the rogers digital box and of course we're also live stream our chit chat here. So do take the opportunity to share a page. I get it that tonight's chit chat is not an entertaining one, but it is an important one. And one of the reasons why um, you know, um, I, um, I brought um, Vorman here is because I always like the idea to close gaps. You know, um, And right now there is a need. So anything along that line, you people, for the people them who know me will know that I'm all over it because I, um, somebody has to you know, take the initiative. And the fact that our guests you know, um, saw and um, you know, in need. You know, instead of complaining about it, he has decided to do something about it. And this is a, a major, it's a mega project actually, and I think it's important. And but keep in mind, I've learned, you know, a long time that many hands make light work. <laughs> so I think if if there are ways for you to kind of contribute, um, and I will get them Vorman to share all the information just in case, so that way you can, you know, you can get some more um, you know, knowledge and more, some more information as to where he's at with it, what is it he wants to do. And maybe you can reach out and see, but there are different ways that you can be part of this project. So why not take the time now though, Vorman, to kind of maybe share some links or let people know as to where they can go and get, um, I know you have stuff online and so on, but if you take the time to share one or two pieces, how is it that you would like people to reach out to you or reach out to the organization or the team? The easiest way is Facebook because lots of people have Facebook and we have, uh, you know, four out of our six sites or five out of our seven sites up and running right now, which is one is called Berman Bidesi Foundation, which is the main site for handling all six entities, which will be two location each. And then we have the LMB Children Foundation on Facebook and ECB Foundation on Facebook. Also one called BARS, B-A-R-S, uh, on Facebook. And also one called Bedesi Animal Rescue Sanctuary. The, the BAR stands for Bedesi Animal Rescue Sanctuary. But the idea of BARS is that, you know, in time to come, and I'm very serious about this, you hurt animals, you're going to be behind bars. And we're going to take those animals behind bars, people chain them up and lock them, don't feed them. So they're going to pay the consequences. And not by my doing, it's because what they're doing and what the court and the law says for the country of Guyana in time to come. Yeah, in time to come. You're right of a good time, uh, a good point there. In time to come, because it, it will take some time for people to kind of adjust. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you also mentioned earlier that, um, you know, time has changed. And I think people are slowly, slowly understanding. And because people are educated, you know, people are educated. Mm -hmm. So people will, will get it. Um, so I'm hoping that this um, here will make... Um, a difference um, for sure. Right, those pages has our uh, cash app and our um, Venmo, but our our website basically is called um, bdcfoundation.org. And we have a very simple uh, website link to all three of them. One is called helpusgy.com, saveusgy.com, and rescueusgy.com. One is for the animal, children, and women. So it's very simple. And it's all on Facebook that they can see. And if they want to help by donating or spread the news, share, like, or encourage others to do so, or looking for volunteer work down the road once we're starting, or even volunteer work to fundraising, uh, whatever it is, we're open to it. This is not just me alone. You know, we have a slogan also, let's do this Guyana. So that means anybody who wants to do something for Guyana, come on board, let's do it together. So speaking of that, do you already have an existing team in Guyana? Like, I mean, like physically there in Guyana as well, or, or, or not quite? Are you working on it? Or I have a team. I have a team that are on standby to start building the facilities and, and also taking care of it. It's not a big team mm -hmm. at the moment, but we also have like scaling as we go. And as we go, we're going to employ people to, for, for who's animal lover, who likes to take care of children or, or, um, women uh, shelter 
And all these will be scrutinized by interview or, you know, um, supervisors before they get qualified. I can do I, I can do your in, in do your interviewing. I work in employment as well, you know. Sure. <laughs> any, any little thing else. Like I said, it's not a one man show. This is a team effort for everybody. And, and and your listeners do listen, but you know, we need them to really, you know, get up and do something. Just like I got up and do something. I want them to help. What they can do. Um, listen, the economy is very tough, you know. Uh, if you have to buy a cup of coffee, a dollar a day, uh, Give us give us twelve dollars for uh, once once a month dollar a month is twelve dollars you know donate to us for a good cause you know um, you're right and um, people are listening um, especially radio and TV people them but study shows that only about three percent of the people will take that initiative and so um, I'm hoping that can change eventually because um, at the end of the day you will need the people to um, you know to make this project grow and blossom. What will it mean for you, though? What will it mean for you to watch and see this, um, you know, this project grow and achieve, you know, the things that you are hoping for? Let, let's say you start to, you know, let's say two years from now, you are starting to see impact. You're starting to see really good results and all of that, like, you know, less animals on the road and all of those types of things. What, may, what will it mean for you? Well, there's a lot of things you said there. For example, um, if this... Well, I know we'll take off for sure because, you know, I'm into a business to give it my all and it's hard work that pays off in the long run. So if we started with two facilities, one in in, in north of or by the airport, between the airport and Georgetown and the other one in, in region um, six, upper Burbies, we plan to put one in SQ Cuba and other parts of Guyana, but also we can look for transporting the animal from another region to one of our hubs, basically, as well as the children or women. That's That's one. And I see success because you have to start something. I I just saw today uh, a map of the CN Tower when it was being built way back in the 70s, and there was no skyscraper around. And today it's hard to find a, a spot for a skyscraper. So we are going to build something to last and grow into that. And I understand you say it's hard to collect uh, volunteer money or not volunteer money, donations basically, and. As a businessman, I have ideas and plans how to do that, you know, by doing some farming. Guyana is a farming nation, for example. Mm -hmm. And if we plan something in Guyana, I have so, so many things uh, in my mind to plan. Mm -hmm. And we're also importer in the United States and Canada. So if we grow that and export it to ourselves and sell it, there's some revenues right there. So we do need the, the public help first and then eventually start streamlining how to plant or do production uh, in any area of Ghana, it could be all regions of Ghana. So the people locally would benefit as well, not just the animals or the people in need. Well, I mean, you definitely have an advantage for sure. There's no question about that with the experience, uh, you know. And I mean, you are speaking with passion here, um, you know, about the project. And I mean, um, and those two things, it goes hand in hand. So I personally um, hope that it works well for you because there there is a need, um, you know, um, because I, I think... Uh, uh, based on, on what you've seen, I've seen what people have seen and share. I think that stats alone is enough. In fact, I took my daughter um, um, to Guyana in 2014, and um, she has witnessed the same issue you talk about. And she was lost for words. She didn't understand it. I had to really explain to her. It was her first visit to Guyana. I had to explain to her, um, you know, um, and so on. Like she didn't get it you know, to see like animals, you know, laying down in the road and stuff of right. that kind, right? So it was a different kind of experience. So um, I think that's, you know, stats there for sure. Well, imagine that we, we remove animals from the roads. That's the safety of the animals. There's also the safety of the driver and the passenger in the car. That car uh, involved in an accident is gonna cost them thousands of dollars to repair. Some, some car can even cost millions of dollars to repair. So if people donate, now and help us remove those animals is better for everybody, their friends, their family. Guyana's a small population of 800,000 people average, you know? So I don't see, I mean, I do see like everyone benefiting, a friend of yours, a family of yours would need any one of my tree organization, what I'm doing. Uh, someone, a neighbor, get rid of an animal or need help for an animal, uh, a neighbor family looking for a uh, child care, maybe they lost their uh, home in fire or accident or just uh, sickness or something, and also batter women. This is happening on every block of Guyana or every village of Guyana. So I'm sure if they're really serious to help to make a change, to educate women in my facilities how to be 
uh, more independent from job or self-sustaining self income or education that we can provide them. Uh, they have education, but you need more education to stand tall, basically. And, and the motivation comes from our team, what to do. Right now, if, if a girl got abused or a woman got abused in Guyana, she has nowhere to go. Where is she going to go? Who's going to help her? Well, my philosophy or my idea is, okay, we have two locations. Let's say the girl is being battered or woman's being battered in Burbies. We transfer them to the Georgetown, north of Georgetown location, for example. We train them. We have crafts. We have fishing. We have uh, agriculture crops. We'll have to, you know, figure out what this person wants to do, you know, like a admission form, what their goals are, what their education level are, and then find them their passion or dreams. We're not just going to put them, hey, you have to learn crafts. Suppose the person wants to be someone in science or, or a doctor or nurse. We'll look to educate in that field and be, get them educated or get them a degree. Then they can go out on their own and get a job. In, in Guyana or any other parts of Guyana, matter of fact. So that's the, the changes we're willing to do. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and um, that one is a very touchy one. Um, you know, we have had conversation along that line here in the show before. And I work as a social worker. I'm a religious social worker. So I've had the opportunity to listen to thousands of stories and so on. Um, it is very difficult for women who are watching. If you don't mind, let me add something quickly. For women who are watching, um, I know it's extremely difficult to share your story when you are in a challenging situation. There's no question about that. But try your best to, to really, um, you know, reach out to somebody um, who you trust, which can be very difficult to do, especially if people who, you know, kind of let you down in the past. Because building, a, um, putting up a building and have all the resources there doesn't necessarily mean that women will just walk in there. You know, the hardest thing to do is to, to, to take people in there because for a variety of different reasons, people, you know, don't, you know, people will be ashamed, people will be afraid, what will people think of them? These are all normal things, eh? but I'm sure all of that will be, what all of that will be worked out eventually, but it's not an easy thing for people to just walk in there and run there. Eh? You know all I of these things. So, you know? I, I, I totally agree with you, but, <laughs> but if they know this is a safe haven for them, because you see, we're not looking to have a typical house built on the roadside of Guyana. We're looking to make a gated community, and a gated community with a with a you know a big bodybuilder security guard, you know that lets people in if if you have an appointment. If you don't have an appointment, you can't come in. So we're looking for like the American Canadian style of uh, of um, gated community for for the orphanage and the women's shelter. So not only that, we're looking to see how we can better them from what their dreams are by when they come to us, we'll have to fill up a form, what their goals are, what their dreams are, and see how we can accomplish that. And this is why we need to help to start now from any and everywhere around the world. It doesn't have to be all Guyanese, it can be anywhere. And we're reaching out to many, many organizations in the United States who help a foundation like this. So we are open to anything, any possibility, basically. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And do take the time to, uh, when we are done with this chit chat here, do take the time to read some of the comments because people are commenting. To those of you who are um, taking the time to write, do know that we appreciate that. Um, your input um, is always important to us here, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily be able to kind of, you know, read everything in details, of course, but um, I will be reading it at some point for sure. Yeah, likewise, I, I do read from top to bottom to see what right. people are saying. And, and I know there are some negative people out there too, but that, that doesn't bother me, you know. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a reason why we have a special, the, the one thing I have to say is that our show is a very unique one, by the way. There's a reason why it's an award-winning show. There's a reason why right from the beginning, I say that if you are looking for an opportunity to vent out negativity, this is not for you. And so mm -hmm. our viewers are a special kind of viewers. Um, they are very unique, very different kind of thing, because I always believe in quality over quantity, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but on the radio people, I always try my best to, um, you know, remind myself to, 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 to acknowledge that, um, you know, that um, we have, you know, lots of um, listeners to our radio or TV, um, but the problem is that we are not able to see you, but do know that we appreciate you listening and um, you know, whenever you take the time to send us email and all of that, um, we do appreciate it. It means so much to us. So do know that you're not forgotten. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I think um, it is a great initiative. I mean, um, 
it's it's a heavy one. It's a, it's it's a big one. It's not um, you know it's not a, a, a small project. There's no question about that. But I think you you've hammered something really well when you mentioned earlier, and I think that could be because of your business background. You said that if it was a small project, you know, a little thing like you most likely you, you wouldn't really make a huge impact, but you kind of said it in a different way. Right, and so um, I think it looks like you've kind of looked at all the different angles. It looks like you kind of you are covering all the all all the bases there, and I mean what you're doing here is not a bad initiative. So I personally hope, and I know hope is not a plan, but you're a businessman. I'm sure you have the plan. So I I, 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 do, I, do. I do have the plan, man. And, and the difference with me, uh, you know, if I didn't have this business and be successful in it, I would not have this idea because. If anyone else was to do this, they are not going to be successful. And it's only because I've been in the business and the family business for 45 years. This is how I'm able to do this because we source product around the world. Let's say, for example, we wanted to bring in dog food, cat food. We know where to get it very cheap. Uh, not cheap because it's cheap, cheap in price because we know how to ship product around the world. You know, top quality product. A dog and cat food is sell by the percent of protein in it, not just because of uh, uh, by its dog food. Some dog food are very low in protein, like say 12%, where an average is supposed to be 18 to 28% protein. So these things we know. So we can source that around the world and get it to Guyana you know, in less than 30 days. So that's one thing we have. But also what we have here is that we know it's hard for Guyanese people to be successful. But if we work on the farming aspect of it, if it's peppers, if it's other project that we can grow, in years to come and then reap those crop and send that revenues out, you'll get back revenues for the foundation. Not too many people can do that. Let's say you had somebody in Guyana doing that, growing this product, they'll want a premium up for it. And then it's not competitive in the United States. So if we grow it ourselves, sell it to ourselves in America and just liquidate it, and we won't take any profit from it because this is for a nonprofit organization we're helping. And it's on our, our own organization. So why double dip? We, we're not into that. We're here to make that entity very successful all right so what will be one or a few if you so choose um biggest challenge you're facing with right now if anything at all because you mentioned something very interesting earlier um i know we do things differently here in north america things are a little bit more structured we talk about land um ownership and all of that right so what's the biggest challenge um you're facing right now to kind of take the project where it needs to be we're just waiting for the title. If we even get a letter from the land and survey that this property is, we're going to start fencing, we're going to start uh, make buildings or clear the land. Uh, and any land in Guyana, as you well know, can you can bring in grass seed from America to grow grass for cattle or horses. You know, these are very simple things to do. You just have to have clear the land up and have a natural organic product for, for the animals, sheep, uh, goats, whatever the case may be, you know? So, when you say you're waiting for this paperwork land title here, um, how, um, if it's okay with you, and generally speaking, like mm -hmm. how long does it take for it to be approved? Like, like, is it like a three month thing? Is it a six month? Like, how does it work? I never had to do that most recently. Well, I'll, tell I you, I, I, I'll tell you how we can speed up the process though, but, but answer me first. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I know people have said they apply for land and, and title for 10, 15 years and they're not getting it, they're in the line. However, I said earlier that the, the government and all the officials love the project and they appointed someone to fast track the location of these lands to grant to us, but there's also a process there that has to go through. I do not know how long the process is, but I feel within the next month or two, or even less than two months, we will have these lands to start renovation uh, and build build the uh, the sanctuary and the um, orphanage and, and the women's shelter and more too, not just that alone, you know. Okay. Yes, I hope I hope it works out that way for sure. Um, uh, one thing I'll say here openly because this is important. Um, I know in Guyana, this bribery thing, it's still alive. Yeah? And so um, well, I, I'm, I'm not into corruption. Uh, no, 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 I'm no, no, no amount of money to corrupt me. Listen, no amount of money to corrupt me because we have been a very successful business family and we know what it takes. And if we're giving back something for our, our country, men and women, we want to do it from our heart. There's no bribery is involved in it because we have knowledge and experience to make this happen. If the government is not involved or if the people do not want to donate, we know how to make this successful.
Fantastic. Um, you know, but to add to that bravery thing, I'm aware and I'm sharing this here for a reason, by, by the way, because um, if these things kind of continue on the way it is right now, the country cannot develop this way. Bravery is still hot in Guyana from top to bottom, from police officer to um, everybody and so on. I was very disappointed actually when um, a, a, a woman, of, um, speaking of woman from project that you're working on, um, can hardly make ends meet, had to pay a bribe to get certain things done. But the lady shared something very interesting with um, too. She said that it was easier for her to do the bribe. And I said, why? Well, explain that to me. She said, if not, then she would have to go back home, pay back that passage thing to come back. It would have taken longer and so on and things of that kind. But anyways, that's a whole, whole different thing. But I just thought I'd mention it because if people like you are trying to do something good for Ghana, right, for the betterment where there's a possibility to create a job and so on, right, everybody has to kind of do things ethically, right? Because if they're sure. not doing ethically, then um, like, like, you know, something's wrong. So we need to change the system a little bit. But I just needed to kind of get it out there because that's, that's, that's happening. And I'm glad you said that um, you don't work that way. Eh? <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that was not been a good start because once you start it kind of thing, um, first of all, it's not ethically. And you know that here in North America, those things we just don't do, right? And stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it is still happening. I was very surprised and very disappointed too. Yeah. So um, you have shared some really good information on here. And um, I mean, um, this is not uh, something where you just woke up one day and decided and, you know, to, to kind of do and wanting to work on. You've been in the business, you know, um, sector for a while. You understand it. Um, you know, you can see things from a different angle. This is a beautiful thing. And you share some on here, which we appreciate. I want you to know again that um, I appreciate you joining here. I know we've made a few attempts to kind of do it, but um, sometimes, um, that's just the way how things can, is not, um, yeah. can be, right? And I mean, it's a coronavirus time, people are dying and all mm -hmm. these kinds of things. And then suddenly we try to kind of do whatever we can to accommodate for, for things as well too. I'm now sure. giving you the opportunity to mention anything you would like to share, whether that be on that project, things that I didn't ask you would like to share, things that you think is important um, for us, the viewers, you know, um, to understand more of it. This is a freestyle show. Take the time to share that with us, and then we'll kind of take it from there. Well, the only thing I like the viewers to do is always talk about something like this, this project for good, which is they can share with their family, their friends. And like you said, 3% of the people actually donate. And maybe as they're sharing that 1%, what they're sharing could help us. Not could, will help us, basically. So the more we get share, more news we put out there about these organizations. And as time comes by, you'll see the foundation started. And, and you know, we have 45 years on our name here. We're not going to put our name out here to not do something good or right. So that's right there confidence in anyone who is skeptical that this is going to be successful. But I have other ideas to make this project successful. Like I have a simple project that can generate probably maybe two to 300 jobs for the women in my operation, but I cannot disclose that at the moment because once I start it, it will be mega and then people will see it and they will say, oh, that was so simple to create jobs. And now these women have something to look forward to be independent and I create a new industry in Guyana for that. So there's many things I'm, I'm working on because of my experience. If I had to go back 10 years ago, like in the past, I couldn't do this, but the timing is right. Our business is, 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 is like level that, we have nephews who are helping us running it before the nephews was small, just still, still in colleges or university. So now we have more people and it got me free up to do these things, you know? And when, when you have the knowledge, knowledge is power basically, and, and you see the need for it. Every guy needs to know there's a need for it, but are they gonna do something? I want them to be part of this. It's not just me alone. I'm starting it, yes, but somebody has to take the initiative. So if they like and see what I'm doing, support it, share it, talk about it. Help us donate to uh, your friends and family. It doesn't have to be Guyanese. It could be a Canadian. It could be American. It could be uh, English. It could be any part of the world. You know, as a matter of fact, I got hundreds of artists, international artists, Caribbean artists, who are going to endorse this project because they know the credibility of me. I have um, J.P. Prince, who you probably know. Uh, he's going to do an endorsement for the women and the animal. And also writing a song right now for my organization for the women. 
to, to go online. And also, um, Mystic, uh, Romeo and Coolie Boy, he's also doing a song for the animals. I just talked to him tonight, and he's going to do a drop for the show uh, for the animals. He's more into animals, and he's one of my uh, contacts in Ghana that motivated me to get this stuff faster. Because I saw him feeding animals, cooking. Um, he's in Skeldon in, in, in Burbies. And then I said, you know, why keep going feeding these animals? Why not let's capture them and put them in the sanctuary? Because the time you got to run around to look for them where they are. And this is how this project started. But again, I have a good team on my hands, the supporters, the artists. You know, I have people from Jamaica, from Jamaica, Sam, and as well, you know, who are going to do the endorses. And that's all going to be on our platform to share. And I hope that can motivate uh, the people who are sitting and watching or other people who might watch it later or hear about it. All right. Well, um, I will be keeping an eye on things, um, just so you know, <laughs> because I, I'm connected, <laughs> uh, closely connected, um, you know, um, there. Um, and so I'll be watching to see. And I, um, I mean, um, anything that can really benefit the community at large, you know, especially places like Guyana that actually need the most compared to with us here. Not that it need is not here as well, too, but I mean, they already have existing huge, um, you know, um, initiative here that that's really helping out with the animals and things of that kind. So I think it might be a starting point for really something good, especially if it the projects, you know, if it starts to create opportunity in terms of job and so on, because it's not like, you know, um, wake up in the morning and, you know, have a job and being independent and all that, because eventually not having jobs and not knowing where the next meal coming from and all of that. And it's a whole cycle thing going on. It can lead to a lot of unnecessary stress and things of that kind. So I'm hoping it, 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 um, it turns out to, um, to be the way you plan it, because it looks like you've definitely, um, you've planned it really well, um, <laughs> because um, if you're already looking at those pieces um, and based on what you share here alone, um, really gives us a good idea as to, um, you know, the potential of this project here. So do know I'm giving you all the blessing here and, um, and um, you know, and, and I hope that one day I, when this coronavirus is, um, is somehow, um, when it's a little bit more manageable, um, maybe one day I will visit the site and things of that kind and see what you're doing there. On site, well, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, obviously, we will have pictures on our Facebook and our website as well. People can see videos, things mm -hmm. like that, see the progress, etc. Um, so, you know, starting this project, it, it's just a little team we have, but I see within less than, you know, let's say about nine months to a year, we can probably employ over a thousand people uh, from farming, uh, bookkeepers, you know, truck drivers, tractor plowmen, things like that. Uh, the scale I'm doing this because I'm looking to have a, a whole in both location. Matter of fact, I'm here. I'm here. You go ahead. Yeah. Both location, like for example, animals about 500 animals at each location. Uh, women about 500. Uh, children about 500 at each location. So that's mega the amount of people. So the job creation to sustain that from let's say you're farming for the, the vegetables and the fruits to be on the table or the kitchen. Um, also, the farming that you need to to sell. You know, we are not a small company in the United States. So let's say we were to bring pumpkin into the United States from Guyana. We're talking four forty foot containers a month. So if you, you're looking at the size of the crop, so one thousand employees is, is nothing. I mean, in the United States and Canada, we already have at least five hundred. Yeah, I want to apologize. By the way, um, I. Um, I use the template, and then your um, I have somebody else's name on that uh, on that uh, po uh, on that uh, uh, on that little slide that I flashed there. But that is okay. So we are joined by Varman Bidesi. I want to make sure I get that clearly here, not yes, the name sorry. that you have just seen. And so that's okay. That's what happens when you do a live show. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. As long as you're okay with that, I just had to clarify that before uh, people kind of get mixed up and so on. I'm saving people from sending me an email. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this is awesome. So do know that um, we are giving you an open invitation if there's a need to do any sort of follow up, particularly for radio and TV listeners. Um, that's important because yeah. um, we want to make sure because not, I mean, um, we take it for granted, but uh, believe it or not, 
not everybody has access to internet still, eh? so do know that. And so that's one of the reasons um, why we um, we started off by actual the RAM, you know, FM dial, and we have, we continue on with FM dial because um, not too many people um, like we we don't realize though you know um, the social media um, you know is is a very popular thing. There there there's a big chunk of people who don't have and even people from Guyana were surprised and because I take it for granted right um if people said to me in the run I, I always you know um the odd times the tv people I'm usually run on a show in Guyana and people me knowing which is a great thing and then I said how come you're not watching it and they said you know we don't have data and all of these kind of things right and so we don't um, think of it so that's one of the reasons we continue to do the you know the radio tv things so do know that the information you share here will be um, you know will be very helpful fruitful for a lot a lot of people all right. So yes, you stay, definitely. yeah, you stay um, right there. Um, if you don't have anything else to add, but do know that we are giving you an open invitation to, to join us again at some point. Um, you know, um, maybe when you maybe when you get the um, when you get your paperwork for the land and you're starting to actually build or something. You know what I mean? But I think they need to actually push with those things, because I mean I, I've known of people who actually started like um you know um hotel project and so on. And because of the same land issue, they end up building on it on a on a piece of land that they didn't actually want in the first place. They would have preferred a different front lot and so on. And then when they start to build, that's when they approve it, right? And so, yeah, yeah. right? So that's the system. So maybe there's an opportunity to for people to start to kind of um, do things a little bit different now, especially if they understand the project. I think move a little bit faster. I guess remove some red tapes, right? Yeah. Removing yeah. some red tape will be a good thing. So whoever is in charge, maybe we need to look into these things, the systemic changes or we need. All right. Yeah, we are going to give you more update and I'd love to come back on because we have other projects that we'll be looking to, like for example, helping the handicap or looking at retirement homes or medical facilities as well in Guyana. So that's another topic we'll talk down the road. Let's get this one started first and let's get into other conversation. Absolutely. Oh yes, for sure. Like I said, you open um, invitation to join us back um, um, you know, we like to kind of, um, you know, have any updates or anything new you're working on. Do know that mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to continue. Don't go anywhere though. Stay right there until I give you the okay to go. All right. Sure. My dear fellow listeners and viewers, as we are officially approaching the end of tonight's program, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for tuning into Let's Chit Chat with Narayana. Please remember to tune in to us again next time. We are going to have a very special guest this Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Until next time, when we have the next show, on behalf of myself and our guest tonight, Verman Bidesi, both of us would like to join together and wish you a great today and even better tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, thank you.